Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, people. Good morning. It is only 9.43 in the morning. I just got back from the gym, so I look a hot mess right now. It is what it is. I don't even have makeup on or anything like that. So it is what it is. I stuff on the probably too. So welcome back, people. Good to see you for all my new people. Welcome, my new subscribers. Welcome. Thank you for subscribing, please. Share with a friend. Like, subscribe, share. So, um, and for my OGs, OGs, what's up, family? You know I miss you. Totally miss you. So good to see you again. Good fam hug. So, um, anyway, if you're new, welcome to the channel. We're so happy you found us. You were probably divinely guided by God um, to the channel. This is a quick message to you. God has been brewing. There's a couple more, I think, coming out. He's been sitting. There's a lot. It's a lot. So, um, stuff is still cooking up, too. So, this is um, a quick message. Hopefully, it should be less than 20 minutes. But he wants somebody to hear this. They need to hear this right now. So, you get shaded. Get myself together. This one's called The Place Where Fear Becomes Afraid. Um, he wants me to give you a story time. That happened years ago. Um, that happened. For, but first, we're going to get into some scriptures. So, um, it was many, many years ago when I wasn't sure of my calling in God, and I wasn't sure. I was kind of, I kind of knew some of the things that God wanted me to do, but I didn't understand everything, which I still don't. But I have a lot more clarity now. God was guiding my steps and leading my steps into where He wanted me to be, and. I specifically remember this situation happening and it was him fortifying strength in me. Let's say it that way. So I have been sitting with God and God had been talking to me and we were meditating on fear. And I'm going to give you the first scripture he gave me, which is second Timothy one through seven. It says for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And then he paired it with, this scripture, which is Matthew eleven twelve, 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And I was like, God, I had never been taught that God was violent. He is. God's a G. Um, then he paired it with this one, which I was like, Jesus, I don't know that side of you. You ever know somebody for a long time? You didn't know a side of them. And you're like, woo, wee. Got that how you got that side, right? I paired it with Matthew 16, 18. And I say and and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I was like, man, God coming hard. I know I'm to be hard now for sure. But he was like, I was like a time. I was like, man, God's coming hard. I was like, ooh, what are you doing, Jesus? Right? Then, which a lot of us are hearing now, Isaiah 41.10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Okay? And there's tons of, if, the interesting thing is, there's tons of scriptures on fear. The Bible's riddled with it. I'm going to leave links down here. It's riddled with fear. There's got to be like 30 Different scriptures on fear. I don't know how many. There's a couple on this link down here below too. So it tells me because of the amount of times that God repeats that God doesn't do anything for nothing. I'll repeat that. He don't do anything for nothing. So the fact that it's repeated so often is because he's trying to drive into us that this is going to be something that we're going to have to face frequently. Not only that, but let's break this down and dissect this to the least common denominator this morning here. It's a weapon of choice of the enemy. Let's say that again. It's a weapon of choice of the enemy. So, if you disarm the enemy by taking out his weapons of choice, as a matter of fact, some things can't operate unless they operate in fear of the Holy Spirit. So, to say it's true. Some things can't operate unless they operate in fear. 
fear leading to control, whatever the case may be. They can't, they literally cannot operate. So let's break this down a little bit more. It's a, it's a weapon of the enemy. It's a choice weapon of the enemy. So it's one he's going to choose frequently. So if you dismantle fear, what does he got? So we know because if you follow the community tab, fear and faith can't live in the same house. Faith is operation of God's kingdom. Fear is operation of the satanic kingdom. So if fear is the primary thing that is used in the dark side and faith is primarily used on the light side. Then what has he got? Interesting, huh? Okay, so let's break this down a little bit more. So God had talked to me about these scriptures. And he was talking to me about how this is a tool of the enemy. And he brought up that first scripture, which was, he's not giving me a spirit of fear. And I'm like, okay, where did it come from? I figured out it was from the enemy, right? So I remember this day specifically. God taught me specifically. Give me guys. I got shirt on here. It's itching a little bit. Um, trying to pull it up. He taught me that day about fear. You know, there's a picture that is out there. So I'll probably get down here too. It says, it's like a meme and it's showing before I go into prayer and it's a little pussy cat. And when I come out of prayer, lying. And that's how, you know, I used to be like, ah, after I come out of prayer, it's still, still true the same way today a little bit. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, yeah, after I came out of prayer. So I had just come, you know, I was praying with God and he's talking about me this talking to me about this and I just come out of prayer with him when this happened the story I'm about to relate to you and I'll never forget it so and all he talked to me about that day which is unusual for God because he usually talks to me about multiple things was fear and I'm like okay so apparently this is something he's trying to drive home so I'm gonna back up and I'm gonna explain what had happened when I was young um, this is important to the story uh, that there was a dog in the neighborhood that had gotten out and the dog literally was like like this little vicious dog and he had chased me around and I was literally running around in circles like screaming I was like ah! you know like kids do um you know thinking the dog was gonna kill me <laughs> and I'm still a year not even a nip on me and you know it just created this fear in me or a me of dogs at that time I don't remember how old it was I had to be like five or something um it's at my grandmother's house fear in me of dogs and it had lodged in my energy bodies and everything at that time and um so i just had this underlying fear and just cautious about dogs so i'm gonna leave that there <coughs> right there so hence god starts talking to me about fear and he goes okay now daughter it's time for you to go out and start your day and i was like yeah let's do it so I never forget this, but the peace that I had come out of with that day was like, it was un, it was not worldly. Like it was a peace that surpasses all understanding. Holy Spirit said, it truly was. It's peace that surpasses all understanding and all fear had been eliminated from me. I never felt that before. Now, now I know it, but I never felt that before in my life. So, as I feel like it's a test, it was a test. As the test would happen, I left, and this fear, it was like this, all this peace had like literally rested on me. I was afraid of nothing. And I go outside that day, as God instructed, I started my day. When I did, not joking, folks. This dog appears out of nowhere, right? So I'm going to link it down on the energy side. It was apparently, it was appear, blah, blah, appealing to the childlike wound, but that childlike wound was also fighting with what the Holy Spirit had told me. So there's two different things going on here at the same time when it was just in the sky. And literally, it's the first time I had ever experienced this. I've experienced it many times now. Um, 
it's something like the holy it was the holy spirit holy spirit rose up in me and i just looked at this dog it's just a stare the dog is literally charging at me barking he's a pretty big dog and barking and barking and kind of foaming at the mouth and i just locked eyes and stared at him like that and I didn't break my sweat I didn't break my stare or nothing and the dog is just <laughs> just coming at me I don't even break my stride I just lock eyes with him and I stare at him and in my mind I'm like what's you gonna do and I'm not joking, this dog that was coming full on attack at me, which was like, <laughs> this went on for about eight minutes. <laughs> I didn't break my, <laughs> he keeps going. <laughs> right? My stare came from Jesus at that point, from on the inside of me, and that dog went, <sighs> and I saw the dog <laughs> around and started to look for where he could run. See, that's scriptural. Those who know, know, you'll pick it up in the spirit. They run. So the dog, in other words, Fear became afraid that day. Holy Spirit, help me. That's what God said to me. He said, fear became afraid that day. See, we didn't, we don't know. Fear has a breaking point. Let me say that again. Fear has a breaking point. And when you're fully in God, fear has a breaking point. There's a point where fear will become afraid of you. Because you're the righteousness in Christ. And you're standing in all your authority and all your power. But you can't not think it. You got to know who you are in that place. I'm going to say that again. There's a place where fear becomes afraid of you. And that was life changing for me. Fear became afraid of me that day. But it wasn't me. It was what it was seeing in me. Because it wasn't seeing me. It was seeing God in me. Holy Spirit, help me. Fear literally went from a charging stance to looking for a place to flee. Coming off full steam. To fleeing. There's a scripture to that too. I'm going to try to link the one down there. I'm supposed to leave this here because somebody needs to hear this today. There's also something where Juanita Vitam is saying it and I'm going to link that down here. She says, this is the season where you square up. It's square up season, people. Square up season. Where you look the enemy in the eyes and you square up. Because all power and authority has been given to us. And you square up. Fear becomes afraid of you. When you square up. So. I'm supposed to leave that here. I'm going to leave the rest of it down here. Give me at least. At least till tomorrow people. I'm going to link all as much as I can. Because I got a couple more videos to do. But I want you to understand this. When you know who you are in Christ. And you know you're backed by Christ. Who, who, who should you be fearing? Who, who is you afraid of? When demons answer to his name, who, who is you afraid of? Who? I just want to know. Who? So understand that. When you're standing fully in Christ, 
and you're standing fully in him and the Holy Spirit's backing you, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you shall be condemned. Every single one of them. So that's the message I'm supposed to leave here today. That's where somebody, I got here up and uploaded because I'm a little bit late on my time frame that God gave me. So um, I'm going to post a little bit, a couple more videos and some of the stuff he's still cooking up and brewing. So, all right. Have a blessed day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.